and you're back on with Kevin and Tiff with on the record with Kevin and Tiffany on 9:30 a.m. The Answer, home of conservative talk radio. All right, Tiffany, let me let me set you up here on, on this next segment. Okay, so we have been talking about uh, really just based on really kind of leapfrogging off of the Palestine Ohio uh, derailment, right? As a, a, it just highlights the example of. People make decisions for you who don't have your best interest at heart, mm -hmm. who oftentimes have profit in mind. Profiteers. Right? So I'm going to give you a stat real and quick. And their minions. And their minions. So according to United States Renal Data System, right? United States Renal Data, data System. And that's an organization that's with the federal government. And they collect data out the wazoo about end-stage renal disease, the different causes and everything. And they have more data than you would, could ever think about, right? But mm -hmm. according to them, their data, right? Very from accurate two, data. Very accurate data from 2009 mm -hmm. to 2020, right? It's like 10, 11 years, right? 2009 and 2020, literally the, just to Medicare, not private insurance, just to Medicare. Medicare has spent over $400 billion on end-stage renal disease. That includes uh, dialysis. That includes all the various uh, infections, in, 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 inpatient, outpatient, the whole enchilada, right? $400 billion dollars over a 10, 11 year period. And that's just dialysis. That's no, no, just, no, that's, that's, that's just includes those. it all. That's just, that includes dialysis. That includes everything that Medicare has that Medicare paid. Medicare has paid. Not private insurance. Private insurance uh, for one session at a dialysis clinic, one session at a dialysis clinic is $4,000. If you yes. have you have to be there three days a week, you're looking at twelve thousand dollars a week a week for dialysis wow. with private insurance. So, so if I were Uncle Abe, right, and I'm going on the extreme, <laughs> I would say Kevin and <coughs> Tiffany, these people don't have a motivation to bring out new medications or new therapeutics because that's going to interfere with their money. Right. Not everybody, but well, enough people who are doing it to where it does have an impact. Enough people are uh, and, the, and it's going to influence the way they advocate for you. Eighty percent right? of of uh, end stage renal disease, according to uh, the data, could be prevented. Yeah, it could be. The, the disease could be managed. Mm hmm. So that people do not go into end stage renal yeah. disease. And now, if it were that with the SGLT two eyes, that is a, it's a huge game it game is game. a it can be done. There's just so much that it, so so many positives to this. Uh, Let me give you some more data. Well, so some more data, right? So that's the new S SGL. T2 inhibitors, right? And then there are also, there's a class of med med medication called ACE inhibitors and there's an mm -hmm. ARP, right? And so if these two medications are given in the early stages of chronic kidney disease, stages one and two with people who have diabetes, uh, hypertension, et cetera, right? Who have a high albumuria number, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a UACR, that's what, that, that's what it's called, the mm -hmm. test is called. It's albumin to creatinine ratio, mm -hmm. right? If they have a high number over 30, no matter what their EGFR is on the early stages, if they're given that medication, they should be given that medication. It is part of the guidelines. To the guidelines that say that. Right? Uh, this is not us. Uh, us. Uh, we're not doctors. We're telling you what the guidelines that any of you can look up and read, and we will put the links in our on our YouTube yeah. so you can go look it up yourself. Oh, if they, they should be given that medicine according to the guidelines, right? Unless there's something else going on that the doctor can identify and verbally articulate. A articulate. medical reason, reason right? not I don't feel like my patient's ready for Consist it. And that medicine has been out for 30 years, mm -hmm. three decades. You're talking about ACEs and ARBs. ACEs and ARBs for 30 mm -hmm. years, right? Less mm -hmm. than 50 percent of the it usually goes of the between people 48, who qualify it usually goes from 48 to 50 each year of the people who qualify who should receive that medicine less than 50 percent of those people get that medicine mm -hmm. less than 50 percent get that medicine there they just presented uh a, a poster was presented at, at american society of nephrology's conference uh that said that only 1.26 percent mm -hmm. of nephrologists that's kidney doctors mm -hmm are writing prescriptions for the SGLT2Is. 
that is a very, very important poster because what they were saying and what everyone has been mm -hmm. talking about across the world, not just here in the United States, yep. is that uh, these drugs are game changers. Yeah. You have cardiologists talking about them because of the uh, because of the positive effects um, on the cardiovascular system. I mean, di diabetes. It's it's a game changer for diabetes because yeah. that's what the drugs were actually created for was diabetes. But it's and it's and the kidney protecting properties. I mean, it's it, it the is medications all around are out doing there, very well. Right? And, and and it's a, and, and the tablets are small. small yeah, and tablets. the data and the, this is all data from uh, the U.S. The United States renal data system. Right? They we know who the people are. We've known since. It, forever in the last three decades, we know the people who are at high risk for chronic kidney disease. And there are people with diabetes, there are people with high blood pressure, and there are people who have a combination of the two. Mm -hmm. We know those group so of people are at from, high risk, from, right? From an accurate data source. So, and then we also mm -hmm. know, right, that those three groups of people, right, though, no matter who you are, no matter what you look like, race, creed, color, doesn't matter. If you're in one of those three categories, you should be at the minimum getting two. If you have diabetes, two. hypertension. But at the minimum, you need to get two kidney, uh, uh, to have two kidney exams a year, right? And mm -hmm. by that, at the minimum, get what your uh, EGFR number is and what your albumin to creatinine ratio number is, yeah, right? You should have those. And there are guidelines around the medication that you should be mm -hmm. receiving. So you want to have a, have right? a renal panel. No, you don't want a renal. You can get a renal panel, right? Mm -hmm. But for me, what I would get would be those two numbers. Mm -hmm. I would yes. get those two numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, a renal panel is good. It gives the doctor more information. But those but you, two kidney you, numbers. But you've got to get those. You've got to get. You've got to check your urine and your blood. Yeah, I agree. You've got to check your urine. But how many people blood. do you think who are who have high blood pressure? I say diabetes. But how what, many of those people receive an al uh, uh, an album? But what we we are experiencing is that people are getting people are getting tests. They're not being told by their practitioner. They're being told things like just like uh, I was just talking to a friend, and. Uh, their relative was being told, you, you're good, mm -hmm. you're good, your kidneys are fine, they're functioning fine, no numbers, no specifics. And then here we are sitting here now with the same uh, practitioner saying, you're in stage four kidney disease. And it's like, okay, so I show up this year and you're telling me I'm in stage four kidney mm -hmm. disease and I've been coming here and seeing you for the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. But your friend, your, your 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 that friend's friend is is one of the fortunate people because mm -hmm. most people aren't getting that. It's mm -hmm. only fifty two or so percent of the people who have uh, who have uh, who have uh, uh, diabetes are getting the test that can actually show the damage to their kidneys. Yeah, which is the uh, the abru the, uh, the ACR because I'm going to albumin creatinine ratio yes. test. Tiffany says mm -hmm. it better. It's a tongue twister for me, but that the, that group of people getting that test is it, it's only it's less than half of those people mm -hmm. and, with diabetes. And we bring we've brought ACRs, the new ACRs, mm -hmm. uh, to the United States with Healthy IO, and I'm I'm happy to report that I you know we were just looking at at you know what Healthy IO is doing because their leadership. Uh, we talk to their leadership regularly because uh, we believe that there should be that this should be done uh, in Medicaid and Medicare that that the population should be sent. Let, let me explain the test. The test is can be sent to your home and taken um, at your home. You get the you get the results at home. Uh, the the provider gets the result wherever they are. We utilize these tests as well. We, we were a part of the team that brought him to the United States. Well, now, uh, I want to say a few days ago, um, uh, Medicaid and Medicare are sitting down with, with Healthy IO. And, and we are very proud of, of that because, you know, real kidney advocates are not out just telling their powerful story and trying to hit every stage they can hit to tell mm -hmm. their powerful story. Real advocates are trying, are doing, are changing policy mm -hmm. and not to put the name on something, mm -hmm. but changing policy that's going to benefit 
the people that they serve. So this, making connections like that, getting testing to the people that mm -hmm. need it the most, making sure that the information is communicated mm -hmm. to the patients, that's advocacy. See, I, I agree with that, but you put a little more trust in the government than I do because what I see is that and there are a lot of institutions who are actually pushing for there's a couple of government entity entities that they're trying to request that this is mandatory that that uh, the uh, the the renal panels and the and the and the kidney numbers are included mm -hmm. and required and mandated right and so there's a, there's a process that's going on there that's trying to make that happen right but then what Tiffany and I was was there's that, so there's that issue and then there's the issue in which uh, it's being communicated to patients. Uh, I like to refer to patients as patients slash customers of the healthcare service, right? And then, but it's the communication phase. It's how people communicate it to you. Uh, I was thinking of the lady that I met in Lulling uh, the other day, and she was saying, and she's a nurse. She was saying, they just wrote on my son's panels on his blood work, smiley, smiley faces. faces. And I could see that he was going down, that his While kidney function his was going down, right? Smiley faces and so all there is down. that policy, but mm -hmm. then there is that space in which doctors have to communicate it, right, to them, and then two, in which they actually have to run the test. Very few, very, very few hospitals, very few clinics, very few practice, practices have a policy in place to screen their most at-risk patients for chronic kidney disease. Yeah. And then even fewer have a communication, an effective communication plan in place to communicate that to them. So they can know what their options are, what the risks are, and give them medical justification for either following the guidelines or not following the guidelines as they relate to diabetes and chronic kidney disease and cardiovascular so once disease. again, nobody's coming to save us. You have to ask the right questions. We have the questions for you to ask because your health is in your hands. So you have to take charge of your care team. You are the leader of your care team. Ask the right questions so you can save your health. And you've been listening to On the Record with Kevin and Tiffany, 930 AM, The Answer, home of conservative talk radio. 